The presidential candidate of Nigeria's opposition's People Democratic Party has accused the nation's judiciary of being hands in glove for the nation's ruling class. Tiko Abubakar in a broad press conference says that despite overwhelming evidence presented by his team of counsels, the justices of the apex court allegedly subverted the will of the people. This press conference is coming after the Supreme Court ruling, which threw out the appeal, affirming the victory of President Bola Tinobo at the presidential elections, which held in February this year. And to further talk about these, I'm being joined live on the news by the media advisor to Atiku Abubakar, Paul Ibe. Good morning, Mr. Ibe. Good morning. Yes, fantastic. Glad to have you join me on the news. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. All right. Your principal, Atiku Abubakar, in a press conference, says the Supreme Court subverted the will of the people. I'd like you to throw more light on this. Well, the reality is that this, the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, and by extension, the judiciary, is supposed to be the last hope of the common man. But it has a metamorphosed into the lost hope. Individuals go to courts, you know, seeking redress. But we have seen situations where it has been, I mean, with uh, the Supreme Court ruling, it will become difficult for people who are aggrieved to go to court because what we have seen play out is that those, the accused, those who are guilty, are clothed in the garment, you know, of, uh, of uh, the exonerated. Mm. And those are very uh, worrisome signs. Okay, Mr. Paul. Know. Right. Mr. Yes. Paul, I'm just wondering, the Supreme Court, having affirmed the victory of President Bola Tinubu as the president of Nigeria, what's next for your principal, Atiku Abubakar? Well, you see, there is a mistake. Many people have assumed erroneously that this is about Atiku Abubakar and his presidential ambition. No, it is not. Yes, the political process of the 2003 election may have come to uh, a closure with the Supreme Court ruling. But that does not close, you know, the chapter of the unanswered questions. The reality is that the president, uh, Bola A. Tinum, you know, has to deal with the legitimacy issues of you know, the forgery allegations and perjury against him. Atika Abubakar may have moved on. Of course, he says he's not going any, you know, he's not going away, which means that he's going to continue to be relevant in the political process. He's going to continue to offer his counsel and continue to be involved in the process to mobilize Nigerians with a view to ensuring good governance and uh, entraining, uh, you know, democracy, you know, in the land. But the question is, what happens next? What will Bola Etinumbu do with the situation at hand? Listen, the Supreme Court may have given his ruling, but it does not validate the fact that Bola Etinumbu forged documents he presented to INEC. He has to live with that reality. And it was not an allegation that was made by Atiku Abubakar. He started way back in 1999. Can you the icon, human rights, icon and lawyer, started the process of, of discovery when Bola A. Tinubu claimed, and wrongly, that he attended Chicago University, which is different from Chicago State University. In addition, he also claimed to have attended government college in Ibadan, and those were false. He lied on that oath. The form he filled was an affidavit, and he lied on that oath. Okay, just to chip in there, Mr. Ebel, regarding the certificates which you made reference to just now, I mean, the court threw out that allegation saying there were no substantive evidence to back that out. What do you say to that? The court simply sidestepped the issue on that technicalities. The court didn't rule on the substantive issue, which is 
The Bola A Tinubu forged the documents that he presented to INEC. The Bola A Tinubu claims to be a female in the form that he filled at Delhi College that gave him the opportunity uh, to apply to Chicago State University. And we have seen cases of multiple, multiple date of births for the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that's very shameful. Listen, what are you going to tell the young people of today who are desirous of leadership? They're simply going to tell them that it is cool to be engaged in Yahoo Yahoo and that drug is good business. I was watching a skit just yesterday of a young person whose mo the mother caught him stealing. And then, uh, you know, was uh, asked why he was doing what he was doing. And he said, because he knows that it will get him to the National Assembly. That is the lesson that young people are going to take away from this unanswered question of the forgery of the documents that Bola A. Tinumbu presented to the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mm. Okay, if I may just, if I may just, you know, come in there. Uh, your principal, Atiku Abubakar, has been described as someone lacking in the spirit of sportsmanship. He has been described by President Bola Tinubu, you know, his response, you know, to the Supreme Court ruling as inappropriate and ungraceful. What do you say to that? I don't understand about the ungratefulness, you know, that you're referencing. Ungrateful to what? I mean, ungraceful in terms of his response to the court ruling. Uh, he says Nobu described it as inappropriate and ungraceful by discrediting several various institutions. Well, listen, uh, the institutions that we're talking about, only last week, Justice uh, Datijo Muhammad, very accomplished jurist, nearly four decades, you know, in the judiciary, 11 of them, at the Supreme Court. You heard what he said in his valedictory speech. It was a major rebook on the judiciary. A judiciary, a Supreme Court that, you know, has excluded sections of the country, the Southeast, the North Central. I didn't say that. Justice Datijo said that. 20 years ago, Justice Samson wife, who is still alive, when he was retired in his valedictory speech, and he made very pointed allegations of corruption at the highest, you know, at the apex courts. Up to today, those issues have been swept under the carpet. So what judiciary are you talking about? Mm. The same judiciary where principal you know, officers are swearing in and selecting their mistresses their siblings, their friends, as high court judges? Is that, is, is that the judiciary that we are talking about? You know, I said earlier that is, you know, the courts are supposed to be the last hope of the common man, but it's fast turning out to be the lost hope of the common man. All right. Mr. So there is no ingratitude that Atiku Abubakar remains grateful to Nigerians for the opportunity to present himself for leadership. He has served as vice president and he has served diligently okay. and is available to continue to, like I said, offer his counsel to young people who have taken over the mantle at this point as we speak. I'm it is up to them to decide what mm. they will do with the knowledge that they have. Okay, I'm afraid we have, to end, to uh, Kevin, we have to end the conversation right here, but thank you so much for your time and perspective. Mr. Paul Ibe, media advisor to, uh, I mean, to Atiku Abubakar. Thank you for your insight on the news. Thank you so much, and thank you for the slip.